home worm farming. Uh, you can see here, this is a graphic of what they call a three-tier system. And it's something similar to one of the worm farms that I have on my patio. Now, you can see at the top here that uh, it has so three systems. You've got your cover, your holes for air, bedding material. It says the active area for garbage and worms, the storage bin, and tap for tea, which is optional. There's also an arrow to the bedding here. Now, I have mine just a little bit different. Uh, I have mine so uh, the food is in the top area and the bedding is down in this uh, bottom area here. So they come down here in the bottom area at night and then they actually uh, come up here and feed uh, through the day and maybe at the night sometimes and the worm tea collects down the bottom. But you know, it's a pretty similar um, system and there's not a lot of difference really. This system is really designed to be uh, flooded, you know, twice a week, maybe three times a week, and then collect the tea down below. Otherwise, it's not much point. You're better off just doing a dry worm farm, unless you know you're just starting off really in the very beginning and you're not sure about how much water you should be putting in there. Now, the picture, one thing they haven't put down the bottom here is a bucket because if you set it, it just drips out slowly, and uh, you can collect your worm castings. Now the different types of bedding that you want to use in your worm bin uh, could be, I like to use the mushroom compost, organic mushroom compost. Also I have used over time peat and you can use coconut fiber as well or just um, like hot garden compost that hasn't fully broken down yet, it's just in that half uh, broken down rate from the compost bin. Now the you need to have some type of bedding material over the top, you can buy a worm farm mats or you can just put really thick layers of newspaper. Uh, it doesn't let as much air in but it still works pretty good and they seem to like it and it keeps it nice and moist and cool. The idea is to keep the worm farm as cool as possible and that get over 24 degrees. For the tiger worms that I use, uh, other worms have different temperatures but I'm not sure what that is in uh, Fahrenheit. But you know, it's about the temperature that we like to live in. You can walk around in shorts and t-shirts and feel pretty comfortable, not hot, not cold. Uh, the second layer where uh, I actually put uh, my bedding in, so this shows that it has the compost and the castings falling through. Um, you know, like I do use what I just mentioned before and then it drips down into here and I collect my tea every day. So these all sit on top of each other, so there's little blocks there so the air can flow through. It's really important that the worms get air. You know, they're, they're creatures just like you and I and they need to breathe oxygen. And uh, you don't want to have your bedding material that's too compacted um, because then they can't move around through there. But some of the, you know, you've got to chop up the food really fine so they can eat it. Um, you know, I got a bit lazy for a while and was throwing big pieces in. And you find that when you go to collect your worm castings, there's big chunks of compost still through it because they haven't consumed it all. So you cut it up as small as possible. Even banana peels I chop up now with the scissors. Um, you know, if I'm trying an old lettuce, I'll chop it up a bit too, any of the old veggies, just to give them an extra hand because they've got small mouths. And uh, that's pretty much it. Don't feed them any more than you can see the food being consumed. So one good way to test is to throw on some um, cooked rice and then just see how quickly they go through that and then you know test that, watch that, throw on some lettuce and stuff and then just keep an eye on it and see how quickly they're eating it and um, then you'll get an idea of how much they're consuming. When you lift the mat back you'll see them twisting all over each other, that means they're breeding and their eggs look like little mini fertilizer balls. So those little yellowy mini fertilizer balls that you get in your potting mix when you buy those ones, that's what they look like, the eggs. So keep your eye out for those. They lay them on the top as well underneath the, the mat that you'll put there, so the newspaper or the worm farm mat that you can buy from a lot of different places. Uh, yeah, like with the water, you want to flood it through about two or three times a day on real hot days, flood it through on an extra day. And that's pretty much it for, uh, you know, this is the worm farm, this type of worm farm kit. There's lots of different ones around, but this is one of the ones that I like because it's great for collecting that worm tea. All right, I'm Marty Ware from the pottedvegetablegarden.com, www.pottedvegetablegarden.com. You can click the link down below and head over to the Happy House and Garden site where you can find lots of more great information about home worm farming. 
please subscribe and follow me and my daughter Karen in our apartment gardening venture. Alright, adventure I should say. Have a great